We talk today about mountain lions on petroglyphs and in Mimbre's art. The way the mountain lion, you can always distinguish the mountain lion by the tail over the back. You always see the tail over the back. You see a lot of animal combinations and different, uh, you know, blendings of animals and people. But if you see that, uh, that tail over the back, you know it's a mountain lion. And you don't need the whole depiction. A lot of times this is reduced. Now here's a mountain lion, again, tail over the back. This is in Petroglyph, Upper Little Colorado region. But notice what's odd about this, there are no front legs. This is the what I'm talking about with this reduction. You don't need the entire depiction to say mountain lion. All you need is that tail over the back. And you're going to see this over and over again. And you're going to, I'm going to show you this reduction. This is how it, be, it goes from a, a pictograph of Petroglyph. It actually becomes an icon, a symbol with a unit meaning. The mountain lion footprint in petroglyph. You see the claws, very distinctive. You see a lot of tracks and footprints in, uh, on, on petroglyphs. A lot of migration ideas. You see them in Mimbre's art too. Here's the mountain lion in Mimbre's art. There again, tail over the back. That's the key element to let you know that's a mountain lion. Notice the white tip, too. Some of these depictions will actually see other uh, more abstract elements within the tail. Add to our video today about mountain lions this wonderful little Pinedale black on white vessel, and on the exterior, hey, there he is. There's the mountain lion, tail over the back. That's the mountain lion. If you've ever seen one of these animals run, particularly if they're running at you. <laughs> they use that tail for balance, side to side, and they can turn a corner on a dime by whipping that tail around. Beautiful little vessel. Okay, here's a whole series of Mimbre's depictions of mountain lions. Notice the exaggerated tail. This big, long tail all the time. And the little white tip is common. You see this piggyback thing a lot. I'm not sure what's going on there. We see it with different animals and with the uh, warrior twins too. There again, this very long exaggerated tail. That's the mountain lion. Here we go. Here's our mountain lions again. Tail over the back, the long tail with the white tip. Notice also the spiral, life breath, life wind of the creature. Some of these are a little more abstract. This could be a fox, this could be a raccoon, but if you see that tail arched over the back. That's the mountain lion. Really, uh, is that a stone image? These are two hunters disputing. You notice the arrow's broken. They're disputing who killed the mountain lion. This is a mountain lion. The long tail with the white tip. But what's important about this image is look at this little squiggly line between their mouths. They're arguing about possession of the mountain lion or who killed the mountain lion. And Look at that squiggly line. That is voice, song, or communication. You see that a lot. And this is the Rosetta Stone vessel that cracked the code of that, that squiggle. You see that squiggle coming out of the mouth of an animal, or some, it's someone chanting, or it's someone singing, or it's someone arguing. This is a great image. This is an image of several men, and they're dressed up in mountain lion costumes. Notice that long tail over the back. These are mountain lion costumes. And you know it's a costume. It's always in Mimbre's art. If you see this negative white space in between the body of the wearer and the, the costume itself, you always see this negative white space. That they always let you know it's a costume. And several men in some sort of a ceremony all dressed up in mountain lion costumes. Now these are uh, bighorn sheep, and I'm showing this because this is a very good example of how the, uh, a petroglyph or an image is reduced down to its icon form. A very nice antelope up on the mountain. But what I want to show you are the sheep. Here's the bighorn sheep, the big, big horn curling back like this, a little bit abstract. Here's another pair here. Bighorn sheep again. A little bit abstract, but you can really tell that's the bighorn sheep with that curly horn. Here we have, here again, 
very stylized, but that's the bighorn sheep with the curly horn. And now, here's the reduction. That's just the curly horn. But that's all you need to say to say bighorn sheep. And this reduction is important because it's one of the first steps toward the rebus principle and or eventually an alphabet, which didn't happen in the southwest, but it became pretty close. Here's the big horn. Here's the big horn sheep petroglyph. Horns coming back, and there's the symbol in petroglyph of the reduced form, just the curly horn to represent the sheep.